Well, hey, 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 welcome. Marshawn Alanio, your favorite relationship strategist. And I help Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling hurt, understood, and appreciated. Now, you are here today because of the title. What does working on your relationship really mean? I have seven ways that it's going to change the trajectory of your relationship all around if you actually implement these things. Of course, think about them and then implement them into your relationship. So the very first thing is you two must address the hard conversations. You must address these difficult conversations because here's the thing. When you do not address the difficult conversations, you two are literally staying stuck in one place. You're staying stuck in your relationship. You're staying stuck in your marriage. You are staying stuck. There is no forward movement when you two stop or never address the hard conversations. And why do you need to address the hard conversations? It is because anytime you have res resolutions, excuse me, resolutions to your problems, now, the problem does not seem astronomical anymore. It is when you stop addressing the difficult conversations. It is when you start to sweep said conversations under the rug. It is when you give each other the silent treatment and never come back to resolving the and resolving how to get to a solution. It doesn't matter. The relationship stays there. The resentment starts to build up. The frustration is at a level 1,000. The annoyance is at a level 1 million, right? So anytime you two stop or never address the difficult conversations, your relationship will never move forward. See, you know how you hear the conversations or people just in general say that they are married to their best friend. The way that they got to this level is by not allowing the difficult conversations to get in their way so they can stop being stuck. They are continuously moving forward because they are addressing the tough things as they surface. So if you have not started to do this or if you stop doing this and wondering why you two are still having the same conversation 10 years down the road five years down the road 20 years down the road it's because that problem never got resolved you wonder why you two are so distant from one another it's because those problems have never been addressed so as soon as you address difficult conversations as soon as you stop allowing your fear to get in the way of being judged or them making you feel guilty or ashamed or any of those things that you can think of as far as your fear. And so in order to stop being stuck, address the difficult conversations, come up with solutions, and of course, implement them into your relationship. The second way that you can work on your relationship is to accept where you two actually are as of today. Because a lot of people don't accept where they're at, and then they wonder why the comparison comes into play. They wonder why they're so unhappy. They wonder why their friendships, relationships, I should say their friends' relationships look better. It seems like the grass is greener on the other side. And it's because you are not accepting where you two are currently. So maybe you also believe that you should be in a different status. So whether your girlfriend right now, you believe that you should be engaged or you're engaged and you believe you should be married. No matter where you are at on the relationship spectrum, you believe that you should be somewhere else. And you're obviously not there for some reason. You have not made it to said next step for some reason. And some of this, maybe not all of it, but some of it definitely has to do with you two not addressing the difficult conversations. You're not accepting where you're at. You're trying to move things along too fast, not slowing down, not getting to know your partner on a deeper level, not wondering, um, excuse me, not asking the question, 
What happened? We used to talk about marriage all the time. Why did marriage get off the table, right? Because we are so busy in our heads believing that we should be somewhere else. Trust me, there's a reason why you have not made it to the next level. I remember when, when I was dating my now husband, he actually mentioned that him and I could have gotten married a lot sooner, but we did not because he felt that I was lacking in any particular area. Doesn't matter what the area is, who cares? The point of the situation is after I asked, wait a minute, we were talking about marriage and then all of a sudden we stopped talking to mar about marriage. Instead of me running away from that conversation because I didn't want to know what he had to say, I wanted to know because I also wanted to know, am I, am I just wasting my time? Or is it something that I can work on, number one? And am I willing to work on that thing, number two? Are you asking too much of me? And so after I let fear out of the window, let me deal with the current situation where it's at right now because I know that I am the wife. I am not the girlfriend. I am not the engaged person. I am the wife. So because I know who I am, where I should be. Now I need to have the conversation to make sure that both of us are on the same page. And if we are not, guess what? It's fine, but I will not continue to waste my time. So don't fear having that tough conversation. Don't fear addressing the issue at hand. You need to know where your spouse actually is. You need to figure out what, what where they're at in their mind about you, about the two of you, because when you stop doing those things, right, you are no longer working on the relationship. You are no longer working on yourself. You are literally working on an exit plan. You're waiting on the next best thing. Now you're in complaint mode about your current spouse. Well, stop all of that stuff. Stop it. If you're not ready to do something about it, don't complain about it. Yeah, let me say that again. If you're not ready to do something about your current situation, don't complain about it. Because you are choosing to be in that relationship whether you realize it or not. The third thing is to figure out the root cause. Yep, figure out the root cause of the breakdown and why you two are in the predicament that you guys are actually in. Now, this could be on something, uh, excuse me, something that you are dealing with, something that you need to release. So it could be all you, but it could be the both of you. Why are you in said predicament today? What can you do differently in order to shift the relationship from where it's at to where you really want it to be? So figuring out what the root cause, what is the why? Why did you two end up in the predicament that you are currently in? And when you figure that out, your relationship could be a so much smoother. It might not be 100% smooth because there's still going to be some valleys and mountains, valleys and mountains, always peaks and valleys. Some people say peaks and valleys, doesn't matter. The point is, once you take away the fear, once you address things as they are, instead of what you're believing that they should be, you can work on your relationship. This is what working on your relationship really means. This is what it looks like. This is what it really means. The fourth thing is to stop making excuses and start taking actions in order to turn things around. Because many of us make excuses as to why we are where we're at. And then we start to do things and we don't see the results as fast as we believe that we should see the results. And so then we stop doing the thing. Not realizing that as soon as you stop doing the thing to make your relationship better, you now start from ground zero. Every time you start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. You are at ground zero every time you decide to start. Instead of just continuing doing the things that you know that you need to do, the things that you have control over, because that's another thing, right? We want to control Every avenue of the person that we are dating, including the person that you get married to, you will not be able to do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't do it to your spouse. That is one argument that you can literally take off the table if you just stop trying to control the person that you are in a relationship with. Because the only person that you can control is yourself. Maybe your children at some point, depending on the age that they are, however, comma, after a certain age, you can't even control them. So do not put yourself in the predicament to think that you can control your spouse because you cannot, which is why you're so frustrated. 
You have to be able to release that control. Unless you're talking about yourself. The only person that you can control is you. That's it. Number five is to be patient and kind as possible. Most of us are not patient because we live in a microwave society. We no longer warm up our food in the oven. The oven takes a lot longer than the microwave. The microwave makes it instantaneous. And that's how we want our relationship to be built. But as fast as you build it, as fast as it will crumble. Because when you build things not on a solid foundation, when you build things on sinking sand, at some point it's going to sink. When you try to build things too fast, as fast as you try to build it will be as fast as it fizzles out. So slow down. Be intentional. Be intentional. Figure out the why. Things were going smooth and now I see a little rocky. Like anytime I feel that something is going wrong in my relationship, I ask questions. Because asking questions will be the only way that I'm going to get my answer. Because as much as my husband intellectually knows that I am not a mind reader, we still believe that our spouse is just supposed to know that I got a chip on my shoulder. Well, guess what? I'm busy. Sometimes I don't notice that you are upset. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute. Something. Behavior. Change. Like, hold up. Something, something ain't right. Then I ask the questions. When all he had to do is literally... Come address the problem right then and there. So intellectually, he knows that I shouldn't have to figure it out. But he still makes me. Now, of course, he don't make me right, which is why the air grows. Then he makes me figure it out. Why do I have to figure it out? Just tell me so we can move past this thing. So we can continue to move the trajectory of our relationship forward instead of staying stuck in the same spot. And anytime you hold things in. You're just allowing the, the, the frustration, the annoyance, the, um, the guilt, the shame, the, the you want to punch him in the head. All of that stuff is just building up. When you have the power to let the air out of the balloon by just having a conversation, by just addressing the thing that you know that you need to address. Don't make your spouse guess. Speak up. Because only you know that you have an issues with the thing that you are having issues with. Your spouse is usually not having the same issue. You're the one who has been affected by the thing. So you need to be the one to speak up. This is what working on your relationship really means and what it actually looks like. It's not what you see in the fairy tale movies. It's not what you read in those uh, romance novels. Yes, it can be that way. But... Most peoples are not that way because they have failed to do the work. This is the work. Asking the questions, getting down to the root causes, figuring out why there was a shift in your relationship. This is what the work actually looks like. The sixth thing is to set and to keep your boundaries. When we get into our relationships, we think that just because we're in a relationship with somebody that there are no longer boundaries. Well, guess what? There are. There's still boundaries that need to be set and to be enforced. Because anytime you set a boundary and don't enforce it, guess what? Your spouse will not believe you the next time around. And it's not that you're doing this to be like, well, I got a boundary for you that you need to respect my boundaries. No, you don't have to say it that way, that forceful, but you still need to put your things in place. See, like for me, this is a simple boundary, but it's still a boundary. When I go into the restroom and I take my bath, I guess I should the bathroom. When I go into the bathroom and I take my bath, that's a boundary for me because I literally want to relax. That's why I'm in there. And I had to set this boundary with my husband because he has a tendency to come knock on the door because he, he believes that I've been in there too long. Well, hold up. I'm not bothering you. I'm in my own little world. Allow me my space. Allow me my time because if you want me to be this happy-go-lucky, jovial wife that I usually am, I get that. From recharging. My recharge is relaxing in the bathtub. So you don't have to 
interrupt. You don't have to knock on the door and ask, how long am I going to be? Allow me my time. Allow me my space. So again, it's a small boundary, but a boundary nonetheless. I need my me time so I can recharge, so I can be the wife that you need me to be and the wife that I also aspire to be. But I can only do that if I take care of me first. I have to take care of me first before I can give to my husband, before I can give to our daughter, before I can give to anybody else that does not live in the household with us. I have to take care of me first. And that's exactly what you need to do as well. The seventh and final way and what it looks like to work on your relationship is seeking outside help when you need it. You know that you cannot or do not know how to handle what's actually happening. There are people out there, myself included, who can help you go from where you're at today to where you really want to be in your relationship. That can only happen if you seek outside help because all of this frustration and annoyance that has been built up, the breakdown in the communication, the breakdown in the intimacy, all of that is occurring because you guys don't know what you're doing. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be mean. But this is why people like me exist, right? Because you, you have not learned the tools and the strategies that you need in order to pull you out of the situation, the frustration, right, the conflicts, that you guys keep going through. It's okay. It's no shade. No shade here. I just want you to understand. This is why you two still on the same cycle. Over and over and over again. Because you don't have the correct tools. You don't have the correct strategies. And so you need to seek somebody out. That can actually help you. Get from this crazy state that you're in. And you can define what crazy is to you because it's different for everybody to the state of bliss, to the state of happy ever after, because happy ever after can occur. But it only occurs for a very small amount of people. And those are the people that learn the lessons, that gain the strategies, that gain the tools. And guess what? Who actually use them. My name is Marshawn Olanio. I am your relationship strategist and I help Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling hurt, understood, and appreciated. Now, if this sounds like something that you need help with, definitely hit your girl up. I cannot wait to speak with you. Send me an email at Marshawn at MarshawnOlanio.com. Again, that's Marshawn at MarshawnOlanio.com. I cannot wait to help you because it is my mission to decrease the divorce rate while simultaneously increasing.